Hey everyone, hello, it's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art. How are you all today? I'm popping on today and we're gonna paint something really fun for the holidays. I'm gonna paint some glassware here for you. It can be wine glasses, it could be pint glasses, it could be any kind of glass object. So I'm just gonna show you how I do all that. And I appreciate you guys uh, watching today. Thank you so much. Um, it is, uh, we're all coming, coming back from the holiday and Thanksgiving and getting back into our routine. So say hello when you pop in and um, let me know where you're watching from because that's always fun for me. Hey, Julie, thanks for watching. We're going to have fun this afternoon painting some glasses, which not only are fun and cool, they're great gifts, great last minute gifts. If you need some Christmas gifts for the last minute, everyone loves these hand painted glasses. And I'm going to show you what I use and how I um, how I cure them and everything. So, and I brought you up on my computer. So if you have any um, questions or comments, please put them in. Please say hello. Hey, Charlotte. You're well. Thank you. Today's my birthday anyway, and I'm celebrating painting with you guys. I'm so happy. Cynthia, hello. Thanks for watching. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm in New England. I'm in Massachusetts. We have a 50 degree day today here, so it's pretty cool. Hello, Cheryl. Um, so it's kind of nice. Hi, Allison. Thank you guys for watching. Is everyone, um, all of a sudden now that Thanksgiving's come and gone, and um, I just ran out to get some canvas for a paint night, and it seems like the stores are getting busy. So now it seems like Thanksgiving comes. You have so much time for Christmas shopping and, and getting ready for the holiday. And then all of a sudden it seems like, oh my, I have to go start running around. So here's a great idea for a gift and you don't have to leave your painting table to create them. So it's really fun and uh, welcome. Thank you guys all for watching. Like I said, I've got you here. Hello, hello, everybody. I'm gonna paint some glassware. Um, glass wine glasses are really fun to paint people seem to really when i do my paint nights people want those stemless wine glasses more now which is kind of cool i've also done a lot of paint nights at breweries so we do the pint glasses as well you can do the rocks glasses i got these little salt and pepper shakers at target those would be fun to be painted hey cindy and from webster you're right close by thanks for watching thank you all for watching and spending a little bit of my birthday day with me i appreciate it thank you and uh, lynn from georgia thank you for watching and please let let your friends know if you have creative and artsy friends please let them know about um my my painting and i love to teach beginners um how to paint in acrylics and this is my craft around the clock segment so that's super exciting too because this has opened a whole new world of craft ideas up for me so if you're my tinker's card art people please check out craft around the clock every fifth every 45 minutes um every weekday there's a new crafter from like 6 a.m to, to 10 and it's so cool because it's not just painting it's all kinds of crafting so please do check out craft around the clock and if you're my craft around the clock people thank you for watching i love it thank you so much i'm such a so happy to be part of this group so oh and also it doesn't have to be just glass this is a ceramic vase i got at target a while back and this would be cute with a little holly or something painted on it so why don't i show you what i use and then we'll jump into painting some simple designs on these uh, wine glasses. I use a multi-purpose, all-purpose paint, which is made for, it's like an enamel almost maybe, but it's acrylic, but it's made for um, all different surfaces. And folk art makes it, I think I have a lot of folk art here. Americana, De uh, Deco Art makes one too. It's usually a clue by the top of the bottle if it has those icons on it that, um, let you know that you can paint on other surfaces, glass and uh, ceramic and whatnot. There is a curing process. There is a way to bake these in your oven at home very safely. It really seals the paint on well. Um, I would hand wash. I put mine in the dishwasher, but I would recommend hand washing, but the paint is, is cured on here uh, through baking them in your oven. Directions are right on the bottle. I have them written out. I should have brought them over, but you just take your glasses, put them in a cold oven, and you bake them for like 20 or 25 minutes, um, 30 minutes at 350. Let them cool in the oven and it's very safe, but then your paint is cured and, and fired right on. Uh, so that's great. Um, so you don't have to worry about them washing off. You're going to put all this work into it. Oh, another glass thing I found at Target. Um, cute little jar, red top. It could be for hot chocolate. I wasn't sure when I bought it what it was for. It's for hot chocolate. My, my uh, viewers have let me know, but I was almost going to save it maybe for Valentine's Day and put little red hots in it, or I might paint a snowman on it and use it for hot cocoa. So we'll see. I just buy my glassware. Um, 
I usually go to Bed Bath & Beyond, honestly, with a coupon. They have the nice shape, the nice wine glasses that I like there in a box of 12. But you can get them at the dollar store, too. So uh, wherever you want, pick up your, gl your, your glassware. Like I say, the stemless are nice, stemmed are nice. Also, uh, pint glasses are good. Before you start to paint, though, I do wipe them down with some alcohol. It removes any fingerprints or smudges or little bits and pieces on there that you mightn't see that will um, impede your painting. So I just take a cotton ball, usually, paper towel, and wipe down the surface that you are going to paint. And that's where I will start. Hi, Tracy. Thank you for the birthday wishes. And Sherry and Lynn, thank you guys. I'm trying to watch the comments as they come in, but I also want to give you a lot of good information and in some painting techniques today. So comment and ask questions, and I am going to uh, look at them later if I miss you when, when you're, you're putting them up there. Hi, hey, Renee. So I sometimes paint on the stems and on the bases, so I'm just wiping that glass down well with just some alcohol, just regular old rubbing alcohol. We don't want to waste perfectly good vodka or anything on this. Um, little salt pe pepper shakers, they might be fun. I'm going to paint, the first design I'm going to paint is one of my most popular ones, is the birch trees with the cardinal. But as we go, we might have time and we can throw a few other little things on some of these glasses. So let me put that aside. These, the, the alcohol dries right up in no time. And again, like I said, um, and I can put this in the description, they're just the multi-purpose, multi-surface paints. And that is your clue on the top there. So, um, South Korea, Jessica, welcome. Thank you. Um, isn't it great with online learning now, um, Jessica? You're in South Korea, but you can still pop in with, with all of us and paint or craft. I love the idea. I mean, you know, what we all went through being in, in for a while. Um, some good that came out of it was me discovering online teaching, gathering a following. I'm always taking classes, learning new things, and you can do it right from home, which is great. You can gather your friends around and do it together, and you can do it with us online too so i'm so happy and thank you carolyn for sprinkling i appreciate that um, i really uh, love painting like i say and i'd love to have more of you and your friends join me so i've taken out just a few of my colors i'm just using my regular synthetic brushes they're nothing fancy i like to have some flats because i love to use my flat for a wide stroke and then maybe for a thin stroke i've got some little detail brushes an old toothbrush we're going to spatter some snow afterwards so I've done many, many, many of the cardinals and birch trees. Super easy. You need three or four colors. And I've done them um, with just painting them. But this one I painted the stem as well. So let's do that. That's kind of fun. And then I spray the whole thing after with snow. This little one is a little different. These are more like Christmas trees with cardinals. I'll show you how to make that tree afterwards. But let's jump in and do, this is my most popular seller, and do the birch trees and the cardinals. I line them up usually and do a num good number of them at once. Like I said, these are great for last minute gifts. You just take two of them, wrap them in tissue, put them in a little uh, gift bag and a bow and you're ready ready to go to have them handy for hostess gifts maybe um, any little gift that you might need or someone you didn't think of and you've got these ready as well as um, craft shows if you're doing craft shows and whatnot this is a great item people love the hand painted glasses I'm just using a flat synthetic brush I'm just going to paint the stem of the wine glass white so we're just going to start with that and let it dry and then we'll put those little black bits on so easy and then it just becomes a birch tree any newbies here today I know I have a lot of my regulars and I love seeing you thank you hi Eric Eric's my regular too and um, Eric one of these days you're gonna get all the paints ready and paint along right <laughs> um, but let me know if you're new to me to my page uh, my my class my classes today let me know if you're a new viewer I'd love to see it I'm just, just curious you know we're also curious about things I am at least where you're from and what you like to paint and what you're working on and, and I'm available you if you go to my Facebook page and you have a question or you have something you're working on and you need help send me a message uh, it, it's you know super easy to get a hold of me I also have a texting number that I will give you a little heads up when I'm heading out to paint um, I'm here on craft around the clock every week but on my other on my Facebook page I also pop in randomly to paint things 
without even a schedule, but I do send out a text first. So the text, the number's in the description, I believe. All I do is paint. Doesn't have to even be a good coat. Doesn't have to be covered perfectly. It's a birch tree, it's natural. We don't worry about it, um, anything being perfect. Louisiana, Deanna, thank you. Thanks for popping in. Hi, Linda. Nice to see you. I'll see you guys tonight, hopefully, too. I, I appreciate you watching. So now to make um, the birch trees. Very simple. You could use a liner brush. You could use a flat brush chisel edge. I like my liner brush. I can load up a good bit of paint on there and get a nice long stroke for the whole tree. I am thinning the paint down a bit. When I'm doing detail work, I do thin the paint down a little bit. I want to get a nice brush load of white. You can see my palette. Yeah, good. And then I'm going to be careful not to hold it by the stem uh, because, you know, it's wet and I always am one to grab that. Alabama, Carolyn, thank you. Thanks for watching. And Sarah, you guys are great. I appreciate it. I'm going to start at the base and pull my trees up so that I can use a little pressure on my liner brush and then pull it away and off the glass. And that's how you get that nice thin line to the top of the tree. So I'm just going to just simply... Press down a little bit and then bring that tree up. And as I get to the top, I'm just lifting my brush off. And I'm gonna just go around. I'm not measuring. I'm just gonna go around and put a few trees here and there. Just again, by pressing and bringing it up, getting a thinner branch. I'm gonna add branches off of here. I know it's hard because it's clear glass. Let me go all around and then I'm gonna show you a little bit closer up. So just, it could be a couple of little trees together. Birch trees are pretty straight up, so you don't have to get um, too fancy with it. You're just going to kind of press and bring it up. And I'm going to go back and then add branches. But for now, I'm just getting the trunks on there. I've got a little pressure there. Remember, again, you can always use your flat brush. I will do that sometimes. I will just load it up with paint, press a little bit like I did. I have it on the chisel edge. I wiggle it a little bit, but you can get a nice tree like that too. So it's not really important exactly what brush. Use a round detail brush, a liner, a flat brush on the chisel edge. Whatever you're comfortable with is what you should use. Um, I like to make painting easy and accessible to everyone without going out and buying a million things. Try with what you have to start and then if you find you need things get them. But I don't want to make it to be a big investment. I want you to use some of the some of the pro you know some of the products that you might have some of the paints and whatnot so again i'm going back and forth just to show you with the brushes but i'm really just going now and adding some branches coming off here and there i want to make a few branches that are sort of like this so that there's a place for the little cardinal to sit so you can keep that sort of in mind so some of the branches i'm going to just come out more to to the side so a little cardinal could sit there. Sometimes you could just put little, just little branch off the branch just to fill it up. I have a little bit of an empty space here. I can fill it up. You could put just one cardinal on the glass. You could put a couple. That's personal preference. They're super easy little birds to do. They're just little red birds and they turn into cardinals when you put that little point on their head and that little black face on them and then they're cardinals. Same with the trees make any sort of a tree white and then put those little black ridgy things on it and you've got a birch tree. Sometimes I'm very simple like this one here just has four around. This one I'm just going like all around. Does not matter. Just now stick on a few make a few branches on them. You don't want to have one just a big stick. You could do branches, a few branches here and there doesn't have to be many. I went a little high here. You really don't want to go up so high where you're going to actually be drinking out of the glass. I just scraped that off. And and just if you don't have the base painted, it's so easy to hold by the base. So I'm trying to be careful. And I think that's probably enough. So right now it's just white tree, white branches. Marie, thank you for sprinkling. Hello. Hi, Javine from Buffalo. Um, I think, did you watch me the other day when we were talking about all the snow that you got? How is it there now? Is it, it's 52 degrees today here in Massachusetts, so it's hard to imagine all the snow that you guys got hammered with. Jessica, sure. 
Um, you know what? I'll have to look. I just randomly buy some sometimes to try them. So, for instance, recently I bought this is a Lang, and I will put it in the description, or if I don't, it send me a message. I'm talking to you over here on the computer like you can see me. Um, this is a Lang nickel brush. I got this at Michael's. Um, I actually, if anybody has a... Um, Ocean State Job Lot, which is maybe more of a New England place. Ocean State Job Lot has little packs of three. They have two flats and a round, and they're $2.99, and these brushes are amazing. I use them for all my classes. Um, that's Ocean State Job Lot, if you have them around. Other than that, I've been I've been getting the uh, Royal and Langnickel brushes from Michaels. So it doesn't have to be an expensive brush. I mean, back in the day, you know, with decorative painting and I worked in oils, it would be really high-end quality sable brushes. But you could use these these um, these brushes that aren't as expensive. These, um, you know, they're sort of an acrylic um, synthetic brush. But if you take care of them, they will really um, serve you well. So let me, um, I'll talk about brushes a little bit as we go, but I wanted to, uh, this is dry already. I'm going to just take, and this time I'm just going to use any sort of a round brush and the black paint. I'm thinning it down a bit. Again, if I do detailed stuff, I like to thin the paint down a little. The little things that, that are on the birch trees that give them their character. I sometimes will just flatten my brush out on my paper towel. You can't really see it there. And sometimes just do little bits like this right? That's not really much. Sometimes I really dry my brush off and even if it's a, it, it smushes out a little, you can get kind of a, it's a little, I'm going to do a few like that. It looks really a lot like bark. So you just do a variety of little black marks. Now see those, they're a little lighter and it's because I've hardly any paint on my brush. I kind of flattened it out a bit and I'm just sort of lightly doing it. And then some can certainly just be some dark little black bits. But already, without even trying, that looks birch-like, right? So I'm going to do the same thing on the trees themselves. I'm going to start out with some thin down black. Actually, I'm missing some little places there. And I go just make some little black marks in my tree. Sometimes I go from the side. It's upside down in, in front of me, but let's just try it. Sometimes I just go from the side and pull a little bit of black in. Sometimes it's just right in there. These little branches are so thin, they hardly need anything. It's really more the trunks, but you could throw some little black, little lines in your tree here and there. And as you go and the paint is off the brush a little bit, you get that lighter grayish almost, or thin it with water and put it almost like a little wash. Because when you do that and you have these light washy ones, and then you go and put like a nice dark one in between, it kind of looks a little more natural. We've got um, lots of people watching. Thank you guys. Candy, what kind of paint? I use folk art or deco art, all purpose, multi-surface paint. And you can know by the top with that icon of glass and, and pottery on there. So it's an acrylic paint. It's water soluble. It's just the all purpose one. And there are directions on there of how to put it in your oven and just cure it, bake it for a little, for half an hour. And it really seals that paint on well. And there's all colors. You don't need all colors. You could start with just your primaries. You can mix everything from your primaries really. So it doesn't have to be an expensive uh, purchase. And glassware you can get at the dollar store, Target, um, Oh, Jessica, yes, this is when I do my lives like this, it's always on my page and I always upload it afterwards and put it onto my YouTube channel, which is Tinker's Cart Art. So subscribe to my YouTube channel too and you'll see them all. But you can scroll back onto my page or onto the Craft Around the Clock page. I post it there again too. So don't worry if you just catch me for a minute. You can always, always, always come back and find the rest of it. And I do some longer sessions too with painting on glass and whatnot. So you can get more information on my page about that. I'm just going around and getting some of these little black bits on my trees and a little on the branches if it's at all wide enough. But if not, you just put a little black dab here and there. And all of a sudden they're becoming birch trees. Not many colors, like I said, for these uh, birch trees. You need white and black a little red and yellow, and that's it. You don't need anything else. 
and they don't have to be just for Christmas where it's a winter scene. This could be all year long. I mean, oh, not all year, probably not in June, June, but I mean, all winter long. Same with the snowman. That doesn't have to be just for Christmas. I love the way it really is looking like the bark on the base on the stem of the glass. Robin, we're painting the Vincent Santa tonight in the Cardis membership at seven o'clock, I believe. Yes, seven p.m. And that's my Eastern Daylight Time here. The link is in the email I sent out and also in the Cardis group under under events. If you have any trouble, you can always get a hold of me and I can send that out to you again. All right. So now we're going to decide where our little cardinal is going to sit. And look at how simple he can be. On the tiny trees, it's just a little tiny red bird, a little bigger here. So it has a little bit of highlighting on the wing and a little shading on his chest, but really just a little red bird shape and then putting that little cone, uh, that little piece of his head that sticks up. Um, all purpose or multi-surface. I think there it's either one. Um, it's a uh, gloss acrylic paint on one of these. One is satin. So I didn't really, I, I grabbed some that are gloss and some that aren't. It doesn't matter. But multi-surface paint is folk art. But this might be older. It's called enamel. It might be the same paint, only older. But they are all acrylic water base. And I thought I had some deco art too. I know deco art makes some uh, all-purpose paint. If you read the label, it will tell you um, that you can use it on glass and it will very tiny writing give you the baking instructions. They even have like gold metallic and whatnot. So pretty easy. Okay, I'm trying to answer as we go, but please post those questions and say hello. It, it really helps. You guys know, like, we love to have you guys watching and the support is great. And do you know that just a comment or an emoji during our lives like this really helps with engagement? So that would be terrific if you could even just give me a little, little emoji, which is uh, in the whole world of algorithms helps a lot. So, hey, Trina, thanks for watching. Um, the oven, Dina. I see a question there about the oven. They scroll by so fast, but I, like I said, I go back and I look at them. So it's, um, put them in the cold oven when you're done. Actually, let them set a day. Put, let them set 24 hours. Put them in a cold oven, 350 for 30 minutes, and just let it cool in the oven is all you need to do. I'm going to get some of my red paint now. I'm just going to use a little detail brush. And again, I'm just showing you what I use and tell you how I do it. It's not any right or wrong way. I always love to show you what I'm doing, but I'd love for you to do whatever works for you. You can make it a little bluebird. A chickadee would be actually a chickadee. Our state bird in Massachusetts here would be nice painted on a winter uh, glass like this as well. Well, thanks, Dee. Thank you for the birthday wishes. So to start, I'm just going to put like a little oval of red on a branch to make it where a cardinal's going to sit. So you could start by just kind of a little oval, right? That's just a little start. Put a little round head on top. Now, sometimes the paint's a little transparent on the glass. The best thing to do is just put it on and let it dry well, and then you can put a little second coat. Putting multiple coats on after, one after another and not letting it dry doesn't get you anywhere. So don't even worry if it's a little bit translucent. I thin my paint down with water because I'm doing a little detail spot, so that makes it a little thinner sometimes. And you can always go back. So I just put a little oval and a little round head on top. Remember these little birds, if you put that little point at the back of their head, that turns them into a cardinal. I put a few tail feathers and that's all you need. That's kind of tiny. I could make it bigger, but it doesn't have to be perfect. You're the only one looking at the glass four inches from your face. No one's going to look at it that close. They're going to just say, oh my God, you painted that? How cool is that? So don't Get yourself worked up when you're painting if you don't like something or, or whatnot. Just go with it and look at it later, fix anything you might need. I'm gonna go a little bigger on this cardinal so you can see it a little bit more. It is translucent, I can see through the paint. I'll let it dry. If you're painting something that's light colored, a yellow something, orange sometimes, it will take an awful lot of the paint to build up, even if you do layers sometimes. So if I'm doing something like that, I will paint it white first, let the white dry, then do my yellow or light colored object or any object that you're having trouble to get coverage. I'm not worrying about this red because I know the second coat's gonna really cover it. 
this guy's got a bit of a belly. He needs to be on a little bird diet. I did, again, just the oval. You know what? How about I do this so you can see it? This might help. So you can see the little bird there easier. I did just a little ovaly circle for his belly. I did a round head and stuck that little point, and then I threw on some tail feathers. That's as simple as these little guys really need to be. And you know what this reminds me of? When I'm doing my classes and people want something a little more complicated, take little squares of paper or post-it notes. You can do your sketch on it, stick it inside the glass, and copy it if you need to. I usually freehand my things, but if you wanted something in particular, you could just put a little sketch on the inside. That, that helps too. Oh, Delaware Gale, thanks for watching. Sue, I have not tried. Regular acrylic paint would probably just chip off. If it was an item that was not going to be used to drink out of or go and be washed, just a decorative thing on the shelf, you could get away probably with the acrylic. But once this is fired in the oven, I can't scrape the bits off. Whereas if it was just the acrylic paint, you could scrape that off. So I, I wouldn't put all the work into it if it's going to be a glass that you're gonna use. I would use the, just the multi, and these aren't expensive. They're just, they're not much at all, these little multi-purpose paints. So I've got a couple of little cardinals since there's two there. I feel like I need to put a third one to balance it back here. Didn't really put a branch that's appropriate to sit on. So I'll just paint them and, and I'll put a branch underneath them. I'm gonna have him looking the other way. So I really do just do an oval, a circle, little point for his head and some tail feathers. And usually his wing is just tucked in there. Okay, so that's for that. I would let him dry, do another coat of the red. We'll put a little bit of black on the head and a beak. And that is going to be our little cardinal. And then we're gonna splatter some snow. But let us, um, and we still have plenty of time. Let me show you these little trees. Cause this is a cute little winter scene too. You could make these more Christmassy if you wanted to simply take the back end of your brush into a lot of colors and just dot on ornaments. You could do one of these trees in a cardinal on the front of the glass. You don't have to do all of these. It's whatever you want. Just take the little ideas and um, and then just add your own imagination to them. So, yeah. Uh, oh, Patty, thank you. I don't know. I love I love teaching. I take a lot of classes myself, like I say, but I try to just go step by step as if people are brand new because people are brand new and even if you're not brand new it's nice to see slowly how someone's working so do always tell me if I'm going too fast um what type of paint that's okay Barb I will keep repeating it and I should put it in the description it's just an acrylic multi-purpose these are folk art just look for the little thing on the top and they are great for glass and like I said whoops sorry it's kind of noisy even the little ceramic vase I got at Target for three dollars one day so I love that little Target section where you go in and you buy all the things you don't need for two and three dollars, five sometimes. Okay, let us do this guy with, um, or a pint glass. I'm gonna do a pint glass. Pint glasses are great because we have lots of craft beer drinkers. You can also even do those Belgium glasses with, um, that they use for the craft beers, which is kind of cool. All right, so I'm going to use uh, the pint glass. I can't put quite as many because of the shape of the glass, but how I start is I just take my liner brush again, or your square, take a brown for the, for this, for the um, trunk. I always say stem for the trunk. I'm gonna mix a little black. My, uh, I like a dark brown for that, so you can see it. And I'm doing the same thing I did for, to start the birch trees. I'm just gonna press a little bit. I'm gonna start up a little bit because I'm gonna put snow down here. So I'm gonna start about here, press, and kind of pretty much come, come pretty straight. Those trees are kind of straight. And I think I would just go, I think I'm gonna just do one on the front of that. I think that's all we need. What do you think? I think so, let's try it. We can always add more. It needs to sit on something, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of white. I've got my flat brush. I'm grabbing white just on the corner of that brush. It's just on the corner. It's a good blob of paint though. Usually I'm telling you not to take a big blob of paint. This is a big blob of paint. And I'm just gonna go and make a little bit of snow on the base there for that tree to sit on. It's, I know it's um, shiny. I think maybe I'm best, if I put this inside, maybe it'd be easier for you to see all, while I'm painting it. Yeah. And because it's snow, that's why I put it on kind of thick. 
Oh, hang on, Barb, I'll hold it up and you can take a screenshot. Um, so this is folk art. I believe deco art makes some too. I do love deco art as well. So it's folk art and this is what you're looking for on the top. If you want to get a screenshot of that, anyone, I will put it in the description too. Glass, it's just for multi-surface glass and uh, surface or people paint on ceramic pieces and things too. What I'm going to do for making a Christmas-like or, or winter-like tree here is just get some green paint. I'm going to go with a little of the darker green. And I'm going to just make a Christmas tree sort of. So it's got the little branches and it's just going to come down in like little steps almost. So I'm going to say if I start at the top. Okay, can you see? I've got all this stuff right here. And I'm just going to make a little bit of a triangle kind of on the top. And then I'm going to just do the same thing, just getting a, skip a little place, kind of those sparse little trees, sort of, which I love painting, even sparser than this. And I'm just going to do that and go down and just get it a little wider and a little longer each time. And when we go and put green on it, like the snow is sitting on the branches, it'll really read as a tree. We want to let that green dry, of course. And you're going to get the idea. The paint is, like I said, a little transparent. It's really nice, though, after you bake it. It has a nice look to it. And uh, you can get heavy. So I did real heavy on my little penguins here. But you can also have it a little bit see-through, too. Like the these, these um, uh, I know I have another paper towel here. These um, are a little see-through. The it's a little see-through, which is kind of a nice look. It's like a little bit of a stained glass look almost. And that's where we are at with that tree. Like I said, you can do one on the front and you can do a bunch. And I think it needs another little branch right here. Kind of was a little skimpy. You can let it dry and do it a little heavier if you need to. And like I said, we'll just do some white on the tops, like it's snow that's settling there. I did not spray this one for snow. This, what it looks like, see what it's got spattered snow. Sometimes I just take the back end of a brush or a stylus and just make the dots. So you can do snow a couple different ways. Why can't you see this one? Oh, I'm, it's hard with the, with the camera. There, that's the snowman with just dots. And this little guy, just little dots too. Barb, my hair's curly. It's not super curly, but I found some new stuff to put in it. And it's called Orange Marmalade. It's something online you can find. And it's kind of some, it's like homemade. I keep it in the fridge because it's made of all natural stuff. And it, it really is pretty cool. So I scrunch it all up and it keeps it a little curlier. Um, oh, Sue, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, let me go by. Yeah, Cindy, that's a good idea. They do have the little sets. And you know what? My uh, Joann's. Joann's still has good deals and coupons. And they do have the little sets. So maybe look for a coupon. This 50 and 60% off coupon sometimes for Joann's. And I know we think of it for fabric, but we don't always think of it for paints. But that's honestly when during um, the, the lockdown and everybody was out of paint, I always found it at Joann's. So that's when I discovered uh, Joann's for paints. So we have or more than 10 minutes left so we are going to skip back and finish our birds up and what I do to make them look like cardinals let me rinse my brushes out so that's the thing these little brushes the synthetic ones especially rinse them out as you go because even leaving them sitting beside you with the paint in them for just a little while really can do a number on them especially the little ones that paint up in the ferrule here will dry in no time and that's what causes the, the, the little hairs to splay a lot if I'm using my big hog bristle brushes, I'm a little more rougher with them. But with these synthetics, try to keep them washed out, lying flat, drying. Don't really put them back up right because then the water drips through and then you lose some glue and whatnot that's holding those hairs together. A little soap. I just have brush soap, but ivory soap works just to clean them out. And, and, and the soap also uses, uh, it's like a sizing. So you can put the soap on it and then get your tip back in shape and that will hold it well. And another little tip, if it's gone and it is all crazy, which sometimes I like those brushes to put snow on, but if you have some that you love and you want to try to get back into shape, just boil a little water, dip it in, and it, you can kind of put some soap on it and get it back into shape sometimes, which is kind of cool. Okay, I'm going to put a quick little second coat of red on my little cardinal. 
I'll probably go around the face because I'm putting that little black area in anyway. Just not being real careful. I'm just doing a little second coat where I see that it's a little um, see-through. And again, I don't mind a little see-through. It looks a little stained glass-like, but this is this is needs another coat. And then I'm just going to take a little black. And it's just, um, you know what, let's put the napkin back over here. Let me see if I can do a close way so you can kind of see. So the little face, it's just a matter. I go across the front with just a little black and just make this little triangle. And that sort of starts turning it right into a cardinal. It's just a little black face. Um, we see a lot of cardinals here in Massachusetts. We see them a lot. They're really a fun, colorful little bird. And a little, and then a little yellow beak. They're very small. You don't need a lot of detail. If I'm doing them bigger, I might shade and highlight, but you mightn't even need it on this side. I'm taking just the tiniest little bit of yellow and just a little beak. It's, you can hardly see it. See that, just that little dot. It's just a little dot of yellow and that gives you the beak. And then when that black dries, I might dot the tiniest little white dot on the tip of my brush just to make a little eye. It just kind of brings them a little, a little bit more to life if you have a little eye. Okay, let me see if I can dot that in now just for the heck of it. And just a little, it's, it's inside the black bit. And I even have my readers on and it's tough because my eyesight's getting worse and worse. You could do it maybe with the end of a tip, uh, the end of a toothpick maybe. It's just a teeny little tiny eye. And now we can put some snow on here. And this one is done. I don't think it really needs any shading on the cardinal because he's so little. So let's just uh, show, I'll show you my technique. Everything here will get sprayed with snow now though. Um, oh, and I think these with little birch trees and cardinals on the salt and pepper shakers would be so cool. So all I do to snow things, if you're making a scene with a snowman or a snowing or even a starry sky sometimes, um, it's very easy. I just take the white paint, an old toothbrush, I add a little water. It gets everywhere. So you think glitter's bad? Make sure you just put things away that you don't want to be spattered. And I just load up the toothbrush and then I just spatter it. And I do the whole glass because it's going to get on the bottom anyway. And it looks like it's snowing now everywhere here. And you can leave it just like that. Sometimes if there's something I don't like on a painting, I make a big snowstorm around it and it just looks great. You can also, I use a stylus, one of those little stylus things, or the back end of a brush that's thin. You know, you can find the back end. And if you want, you can get some bigger little snowflakes. So sometimes I'll just go and just do a few around that are a little more consistent. Sometimes I just do this like I showed you on the penguin glass. Um, but it's up to you. It just, it just gives it that finished touch, right? So cool. So I would do them as a pair if you were painting them. I'd paint two at once. Um, and this guy, let's go back. We're going to put some snow on the branches. This might help you see it a little bit. Any round brush or liner. It's just, uh, I'm just kind of starting and pressing and pressing. It's just very irregular and it's just on the top of that. It's a little wet still. I'm gonna to try to be careful so we don't have green snow. It can drip right off the edge. I use these little trees a lot in different little winter paintings. I, you know, I showed without the, but you can see now, just it's a little bit of a comical, a whimsical tree. It's not a really a real tree, but that works. And we're gonna do a little cardinal right on there as well. Oh, Annabelle, hi, thank you, my fellow, fellow crafter. I love watching you guys too. I love to see all the cool stuff you all make. You guys really check that craft around the clock site right out because all these cool homemade gifts you could make and who doesn't, I would so much rather have something someone made than something that, you know, that is just bought off the shelf. I really appreciate ho homemade gifts. And I think, I think everyone does. You could put a couple, we'll put a couple cardinals on this one 
To place them again, I just put a little oval of red. I'll do a little circle for his head and then just throw some tail feathers there. I'm gonna to try to make him a little bigger so you can see him, although he'd be kind of big for the branches. I'm gonna make two, I'm gonna make one up here too. And once you get those little strokes down, it's pretty easy. And let me show you even on my paper plate here a little bigger, those little tips. So it's really super easy. I just make an oval, like I said, this is upside down and sideways, but a little oval, put a little circle on for a head. Give them that little pointy thing and then I just throw some tail feathers on like this and that's painting it upside down and when you put the little black face and the little beak on you've got yourself a cardinal so I'm going to put this on a little heavier it's going to yeah you gotta let it dry so let's just let that dry I can put the little beak on for now if I want to though and we can put the snow on that uh, I can actually get the little black face part on, maybe. I could take my hair dryer out and dry it too, but let's just see what we can do here. You get the idea. You know what I'll do when we have a few minutes? Oh, we don't, we have four minutes, so we're gonna wrap up pretty soon, you guys. So I am just going to give a little beak, a little beak. I'll put their little eyes and maybe another coat of red on them. Let me put the thing in here so you can see it. So it's going to just have some snow spattered. And sometimes if you want, the snowmen are super easy to paint. This would be something I would base him all in a light blue to start. See the light blue on the corner? Light blue, and then you can dry brush white on top. I just did the dots on this one with a little back end of the brush. I gave him a little cardinal. You can do hats. You can do whatever you want on them. Um, simple, simple is the snowflakes. You can find these. I found these glasses actually at the dollar store, I believe. The blue. Or sometimes you find green and you can paint a Grinch or something. Snowflakes are super simple. But snowmen are so fun, and people just love snowmen. Actually, gnomes. I have painted gnomes on here, and people love those. I don't have any of those. This I didn't love. I did kind of like a... I was looking for something for more for the guys at the uh, at the brewery to paint, you know? So I did this kind of a winter scene, just trees and mountains, a little Bob Rossi, I guess it is. So those are all some ideas. These little penguins, I think I showed you. They're fun. Get some ideas from Christmas cards, even, or... A holiday decorations there's lots of things so um any questions too now because i have a couple minutes and um thank you kathy oh tanya of course that's what i should do yeah hang on the black plate the back black face part so you can see my little crazy upside down cardinal here take your black and i just put it across the front of the face first can you see that all right I don't... and then i just make um a little triangle to the back and then you can just put on your little beak. It's just a little dab of yellow, just here. Just a tiny little triangle. And then I just get a little dab of white in the middle of that little, it's a little close to the beak, but I'm not sure. Can you see that kind of, guys? It's a simple, simple little, um, little bird, but it's just a matter of, um, let's see, I can do this. It's really just painting an oval and then a circle. And then I just, with my brush, I just bring it in from here and just do a couple of tail feathers. If he's really big, I might like shade, uh, you know, under here for a wing and a, a little lighter here, but these guys are teeny. So there, and then the black part just goes, I just go like this with my brush and in and fill that in with black. Tiny little bit of yellow. And just a little dot for an eye. I know that looks kind of crazy. Oh, the best, the, the most important part is that on his head. Instant cardinal, right? Oh, Charlotte, I hope I see you tonight too. We are painting a vintage Saint Nick. I have an art mem. I have two art memberships. I will tell you about them in one minute. Um, and if you go to my link tree up above in the description, you can think find information about it. But one is just one painting a month, and we are doing. Um, oh. Next month in December, we're doing the nativity scene. 
So I paint with my members, the Cardist members, um, four times a month. We do three paintings, two live events. But I have another membership that if you just want to get jump in and try it, one painting a month, a recording that comes to you by email, but it's available to you online forever um, in a group. And we're doing this one in December. So send me a message if you have any questions or text me. I've got to jump off. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for the next crafter. Let me know what you guys want to make too. I'll see you soon. Bye.